Well, good morning, Man United fans all over the world. I think it's the third or second consecutive day when I'm waking up to giving you a live stream of Man United. Hope this proceeds and obviously takes us to the levels that we've always gone ahead to admire because I've always wanted to obviously have a single live stream to discuss to my fan or to discuss with my fans. Not one, but even two is what I want to do on a daily. But let's wait and see how this continues to be but i thank god for the gift of life and giving me that urge to sleep and wake up to obviously work to the viewers of man united and the fans of hear me out and the fans of man united all over the world in africa smash the like button comment and share if you're watching us for the very first time endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily we are having few subscribers left to hit 17,000 subscribers please do the needful and subscribe let's see close to 300 likes smash on this video rock and david is my name and hope you guys are really having fun right and i'm here to let you know that we are talking Kobe Mainu, Brentford doubt. He's doubtful for the game of Brentford. That is the most shocking bit of shocking bit about this video. Confound by Eric Ten Hag, firstly brought him through by journalists, but then Ten Hag appeared onto the United TV and he had to confirm to us that it's true. It's true. Kobe Mainu is doubtful. The reason is going to be given to you by Eric Ten Hag. Casimiro in the mix. We are talking Lisandro Martinez. We are talking Kobe Mainu to the fullest. What Ten Hag's plans were and what he told him during that final of the Carabao Cup that has gone ahead to come to pass. And lastly, he has gone ahead to obviously talk about Liverpool. You know, if you're a United manager and they've gone ahead to ask you a question, when you really have to use Liverpool as as a hitting board you have to do it and today ten hag has gonna hate to use liverpool as a hitting board and guess what it has gonna hate obviously be beaten in there for you and it's really very painful for the side of liverpool because if i'm gonna tell you that answer you're going to get to know that ten hag is really that wise man and that obviously strikes when you least expect him to strike i'm having fred kabaya good morning my brother i'm having hassan kamara good morning Aradi. how are you doing i'm doing great happy easter holidays <coughs> to everyone watching you through to the muslims that is a mubarak sorry that is a ramadan mubarak so let's obviously kick start it off with this um kobe menu story coming in through the first person to say it was rick uh rich fay you know he works for the united no he works for the man united <laughs> um he works for the manchester even he works for the nation world right he's a united correspondent for the nation world he told us that kobe made you missed united training yesterday due to illness not fully recovered yet but there is hope he'll be fit for the brentford tie that's what he went ahead to let us know and when i really saw this story late in the night i was like oh my god why does this happen right now but i was like we can really go past brentford without kobe menu though in the remaining 10 games of the premier league season you would have to play every game with your favorite squad so i was like oh my god why does it happen right now but i'm not all that worried i you know it's really a worry because we need the player but it's not all that a big team that you're gonna come out and do the need for if you surpass liverpool <coughs> without casimiro and lisandro martinez and luke shaw you know how about the side of brentford when you're really having casimiro and lisandro martinez back into your team i think it's such a huge boost and we just shouldn't come out and obviously cry over it i've gone ahead to see some crying emojis in the comment section in there for you so let's wait and see how that really pans out in here and then <clears throat> ten hag talking to the man united tv said kobe menu missed training yesterday because he was ill today he's here but he hasn't fully recovered there are still quite a few hours until the kickoff sending so he's gonna be subjected to what we call a late fitness test and he'll only come into play if at all he feels like he's really doing good and i don't see any reason as to why people should come out and really worry about the injury of sorry the illness of kobe menu this is brentford this is brentford and i think we've not gonna hate to win away in london by the way the only london teams we've gonna hate to beat i think it's um it's uh <coughs> fulham 
ever since Eric Ten Hag came in here. So we need to obviously get these 200 wins. Remember, we are playing against uh, Brentford today and we are playing against Chelsea. That is on that is on Thursday. So we are playing two away London games. Now, in this London game we are going to play, I think we can really do without Kobe Mainu. That is it. If Casemiro is really fit, then we need to see to it that we put Casemiro and I think Ten Hag would go with Scott McTominay into that midfield. Though I would prefer Amrabat and Scott and uh, I would prefer Amrabat and Casemiro into the double pivot for the club of Madinette. We can go past them. We can go past them without Kobe Mainu. And I see no reason as to why people should come out and really worry, cry about the lad. I know we love the player, but you reserve him for the future. If at all he's ill and he has failed, obviously, gate approved then we shall find means of obviously surpassing past this game of football because that lineup now totally changes you know you know that you're going to be having onana in goal dalo right back bisaka left back <coughs> lisandro martinez left back uh the run sorry lisandro martinez left sided center back the run right sided center back Casimiro in the double pivot alongside scott mctominy all Amrabat, then Bruno Fernandes playing ahead of them as a number 10. Ganacho right attacking midfielder. Um, then Marcus Rashford left attacking midfielder. And Rasmus Hoyland lead through the center. And I think that team can really get us a result of some good goals and some good three points from the community stadium in Brentford. That's what I'm believing in. But I know if he's a viable, Ten Hag might not even start him. He might really plan to keep him on the bench. And then try to bring him later, maybe when the game of football is really needing him. And I understand it's going to really act as a sign of rest because ever since he made his debut against Everton, his full debut against Everton, this guy has not going to hate obviously be rested. Not even for a second. You understand? He hasn't going to hate to be rested, not even for a second. So that's why you need to obviously keep your player available. And if at all this rest is called him for, for him to reshape, and obviously become a better man in the game that you're going to be playing against in the game you're going to be playing against um against chelsea and liverpool by the way remember after playing chelsea on thursday we are playing liverpool at old trafford you know that so i think you reserve him for the better and we can do brentford without him that is it i know they're having onyeka in the midfield jensen is it no guard and very many others but if you're having Casemiro, Amrabat, and Scott McTominay as two cho as three choices to choose two to start in your double pivot plus Ericsson, I think those players can do the job. They can really get us out of the way, and the rest will be history into that game of football. I really understand that by the time I come here to do the match day live, would have already gone ahead to know whether Kobe Mania is going ahead to travel with the club of Man United to London. I know they've already traveled to London and I know he's with the squad, but a decision has to be made on whether he's really going to be part. And this has been a scenario that has going to happen at Man United <coughs> several occasions where you just see a team with a player expected to start when he's totally out. When he's totally, totally out. We saw it when you're going to play um, against Wigan. You remember when um <coughs> you remember it very well when we went ahead to lose to nottingham forest in the league by two goals to one you remember uh Ahmad diallo came up and really put in a very good cameo and i, I was like when you're playing against when you're playing against wigan he has to get a chance to start and he was ill amrabat i think he missed out on the entire month of december because of illness you know that is it for him and um illness has gone hit to turn out as illness and it is not only affecting man united but even other teams you've gonna hate to see it that some players are not gonna hate to be forced on the field of play because they've gonna hate to be proven ill and for that let me ask you which double pivot would you love to see start <coughs> in the game of um of of brentford which double pivot would you would you start you know if mino is out let me try to give you options the first option is casimiro 
Casemiro and Amrabat, right? Then we go to the second option. It's um, Casemiro and Ericsson. Because all these Casemiros are constant. <laughs> that is it. Casemiro and Ericsson. And lastly, Casemiro, right? Casemiro, 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 and McTominator. So, go into the live chat, try to vote. <laughs> I've gone ahead to obviously put the poll there. Go ahead and really vote. Who would you want to obviously, which double pivot would you like Ten Hag to pick if at all the guy is really out <clears throat> and it doesn't really make it to what we call the match squad that's going to be taking on Brentford. Go ahead and obviously vote into the live chat. <clears throat> the poll has already gone ahead to be established there. So we wait and see how that really pans out in here onto the beautiful channel of United Matters channel. But I think more chances to see Scott McTominay partnering with Casimiro in there for you. So after that, we go to Eric Ten Hag talking about Casimiro. And this is what he said about this Brazilian international that is casimiro he said he's been training he was with the team yesterday he's making good progress we need to see if he's ready to start or if we have to wait so another late fitness assessment subjected to uh, another late fitness test for casimiro but for casimiro I'm 95% sure that is going to be part of this tie. <laughs> that is it. That's how sure I am on Casemiro because I think he really went in for um, a checkup with his doctor and he spent two, are they two? I think it's now three weeks. Casemiro last kicked a ball for Man United when we played, um, when you played Everton, right? After playing against Everton, Casemiro really Casemiro really mm, after playing against Everton after playing against Everton we thought that he was going to make it the game of Liverpool and he pulled out on the last uh, on the last hours or days of the game and he also pulled out of the Brazilian national team yet we expected him to be part of that and that's when we got to know that he is really injured and he felt like he shocked the physio team of Man United when he told everyone that he wasn't really ready to do the needful. You understand? And we found ourselves in a position of not having him in the game of Liverpool, but went ahead and really won. And now he's back. I think those three weeks he has gone ahead to rest are really enough for him to obviously get him to this game of football. You know? So we just have to wait and see how that is really going to pan out for this man who was going to hate obviously put up a shift in the club of Man United. But we all know his importance, especially when he's really doing the job for the club of Manchester United. He's really one of those that he would obviously want to get into your team to do the job of a central defensive midfielder. In games like this, you need his experience because he's an experienced player that gets you going day in, day out. And that's the beauty of a player like him when you really have him at your side. He gives you loads of vibes that always helps you to build in the midfield and you really feel like nothing is really going to go wrong when you're really having Casemiro into shielding that back four. And it will be very bad that you are playing against <coughs> Brentford and you're not having your favorite double pivot. You know the, uh, you know the favorite double pivot for the club of Man United? You know, unless you're a novice and you're just going to hate to start supporting Man United, you very much know that Man United's best pivot is Casemiro and um, is Casemiro and um, it's Casemiro and uh, Kobe Mainu. That is it. So, if you're not having <coughs> Casemiro and Kobe Mainu, then that will be really very teary for the club of Man United. I understand we can really do that. We can really do away with that game, you know, even if those two are real away. And if it's the case that they are going to be readily available for the game of Liverpool, the game of uh, Chelsea, 
that is on the 4th and 7th this week, sorry this month, then good to go because the easiest out of those two games, out of those three games to go ahead without them is the game of Brentford and for me it will be like a blessing in disguise that we've gone ahead to find ourselves in a position of not having those two for only one game <clears throat> and that one game is a game of and that one game is a game of um, Brentford because if you're not having Casemiro and Kobe main that team that calls in for Ten Hag to start Ericsson and um, Ericsson and Scott McTominay all Amrabat and Scott McTominay because if Casemiro is out and Kobe Mahin is out you know where we're going it's all about Scott McTominay being a constant in the team you sort of it that when you're playing against Liverpool the manager might ahead obviously start him by the way even when those two are really available the manager might obviously decide to go with Scott McTominay and either Kobe Mahin or Casemiro in that midfield he can he can when you're playing against Liverpool, he opened up that midfield and said, I'm not going to play with any sitting CDM, you know, and he decided to go on for that guy, Scott McTominay. Yet we thought that Amrabat would have gone ahead to do the needful to shield the back four and really take us to the next level. Even when we are really searching for goal, yet you need to eat that Amrabat can come in through and really help you in the central defense. He can come and help you in as far as going forward is concerned. He said, no, I'm not going to take on Amrabat. He had to bring on Harry Maguire, he brought on Anthony, he brought on Ahmad Diallo, he brought on Mason Mount, and um, which other player? He brought on five players that came up and obviously did a very huge turnaround into that game. So that is Ten Hag for you. So for me, <clears throat> I know any midfield, any midfield pairing that is going to be played into that tie is going to kill off that game. Though you would love to see that you have the best of your double pivot of Kobe Mainu and Scott McTominay into the mix. Smash the like button close to a uh, hundred times as we really continue to give you the news. So Manchester United is really having problems of injuries and those problems have been really um, recurring but we know soon that will come to an end. Then after that we got a very credible journalist also coming in through and confirming to us that <laughs> this is Chris Walder, football writer for the Daily Mail. He told us that Lisandro Martinez could return after eight weeks out with any injury against Brentford. While well, United will make a late decision over Casemiro and Kobe Mainu, who has been ill. Now, he has been ill, and Lisandro Martinez obviously is part. For me, he's a constant. He's part of this team because Ten Hag sent for him and cut short his holiday. He spent with the Argentine national team and he told him, please, on Sunday, come. I want you to join the club of Man United. I want you to return to London via the weekend. That is last weekend. And at the start of the week, that is Monday, we want you to be part of the team of Man United. So that's what and how we went ahead to talk to you. Lisandro Martinez and um, Kobe Mainu, ill. <coughs> but him and Casemiro, they are going to be late decision they're going to be let decisions made in there for you. Then Ten Hag has come out while speaking to the United, to the Manchester United TV, and he talked about the injuries that have gone ahead to experience in the entirety of this season. He said, I know all managers have injuries and you have to deal with them, but this season has been bad for us in that aspect and it has had an impact on the way we play and our results. The good news is that the players are on their way back. So he who laughs last laughs best. That is really well known for people who have gone ahead to be really regulars when it comes to listening to some English proverbs, idioms, phrasal verbs, and so on and so forth and sayings. I don't know that it's a saying, only proverb, only what, but all I want to let you know is that he who laughs last laughs best. Now, when you look at this season of Man United, it started off on a bad note with very many injuries. <clears throat> You can all agree with me that injuries were all over the place for the club of Man United. And I've always gotten to know that Man United is a team that had gone ahead to come up with a style of play that I've always gone ahead to really explain to you. And if Ten Hag had his like 90% of his team fit for 90% of the season, trust me, 
would have gone ahead not to be having these injuries. You understand? Would have gone ahead to be really having different things to talk about. Like blame the manager or really feel like he deserves to be sacked. You know? At the beginning of the year, when Lukashio returned, Casemiro was there, Alexandre Martinez was back, you saw how beautifully he went ahead to play. We could really transit well from the back, do that build up play very well from the goalkeeper to the back four, through the midfield, and then connect the midfield to the attack. And that is the plan of Eric Ten Hag. And that was really uh, hammer blood by the injuries of Casemiro again. Look, your hint back. Alessandro Martins has been away for eight weeks. You understand. So, <clears throat> you are trying to plan out on a style of play that is good for the eye, for your fans, but sometimes it doesn't really go on as planned because you can't, <clears throat> you can't at any one point, you know, turn out a season, turn around your season in a style of play you are going to have to prepare in the preseason because of the injuries you're going to have to have. We all know how good Ten Hag is and how he had planned to play with the club of Man United and he said he wants to have the best transitional team in the world, you know. But what happened? He went ahead to see himself lose out because of the injuries and the most important players of his style of play went ahead to obviously get injured. That is it. So after they got injured, he found himself in a position of really not being able to do what he promised us. But all in all, injuries have been a big factor. And this statement will be remembered when he said it every time he was asked of the style of play. He says, I'll always show you my style of play and how good my team is when I have my best players. And when his best players are back, <clears throat> this plan really plays some good football. And today, if you see Lisandro Martinez in that lineup, Casimiro, uh -huh, Bruno Fernandes, Rasmus Hoyland, Dalo, obvious case. You are going to see a very good transiting team in there for you. Now, talking about the transitions and transiting that Ten Hag is going to have to talk about several times, he was asked today in the interview that he held with the Man United TV on whether it is still his ambition to make United the best transition team in the world as he said in an interview. He said, you saw the game against Liverpool, how good we were in transition. So, this is the nail I told you he really went ahead to hit in the head of Liverpool. Every time you get something good from your, from your number one rival in the game of football, you have to come out and celebrate it. And he's still celebrating that, that win we got from Liverpool and we knocked them out of the FA Cup, courtesy of the late winner of Amadi Diallo. Obviously, when you look at the goals that went ahead to score against Liverpool, it's all about transiting. The first one, it was a very good transition, you know, of the team. That was uh, Scott McTominay, but the transition was in between Bruno Fernandes, um, Rashford, and Alejandro Ganacho. Very good transition move in there for you. Then, when you look at the second one, you saw how Rashford released Ganacho. You know, Ganacho goes ahead to intercept the ball. You know, goes ahead to intercept the ball in the middle of the park. <clears throat> After intercepting the ball in the middle of the park, he passes it to Bruno Fernandes. He makes that run into an open space where uh, Bruno Fernandes found Rashford and Rashford found that pass to Ganacho. Ganacho cuts inside, hits that ball, blocked, and it really finds <clears throat> Anthony. And Anthony hits it into the back of the net. That was a very good transition. <clears throat> then later, the third one, you very much know that we press. After pressing, we really steal that ball and McTominay releases Marcus Rashford. Very good surgical precision and that pass you went ahead to see to it that it goes in the back of the net. What a dispatch by the lad himself, that is Marcus Rashford. Then later, the third one, he is the best description of the best transiting team in the world. You go in a corner. It is headed out by Scott McTominay. Then Harvey Elliott of Liverpool gets hold of that ball. When he gets hold of that ball, he really 
gets pressed by Ahmad Diallo. Ahmad Diallo steals that ball and just gives it to Alejandro Ganacho. <clears throat> Ganacho runs vertically and he really tries to create a 2v1 situation with Bradley. Bradley was the only central was the only defender left in the half of Liverpool and the V2 the V the 2v1 situation created a very disturbing decision to be made by Bradley on whether to go on whether to attack Ganacho that really has the ball hall to really hold up a little bit you know like how Declan Rice did when Liverpool was really playing against Arsenal and he hold up four players can I really show you this and I think it was because of it was lack of um, it was lack of it was lack of experience according to me because when you look at how Declan Rice went ahead obviously hold on to this it was really 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 hard to come out and really think that this goal would not to go in for the side of Liverpool according to how they went out with attack and really swamp him up look look <clears throat> even be you look Look at how they really attacked Declan Rice. You know, this is mission possible, made impossible by Declan Rice. Liverpool had one, two, three, four, five players. You know, it's a 5v1. But guess what? This guy came up and did the needful and really stopped them. Even Diego Dallo. You remember this very well when you're playing against Liverpool in this game. You know, you remember. This situation was how much worse to be exposed to a player than that of Alejandro Ganacho and um, Ganacho, Ahmad Diallo and uh, Bradley because look at Dallo against one, two, three, four, five. You know, even against Declan Rice, they are five and they didn't score this, but the experience of, of uh, Declan Rice kicked into play. And in this game also, the experience of Dallo kicked into play and remember who comes out to the service or to the saving of Man United, it's Ahmad Diallo who comes in through and gets the ball from this guy who was trying to obviously serve it. You understand? So, the situation would have gone ahead to be managed better if at all <clears throat> this player was really having experience. But we went ahead to obviously score that fourth goal, and it's one of the best things that Tenaka has gone ahead to hint about. And he also added about us being the best transiting team in the world that. <clears throat> This really made me happy. I was really excited about what Ten Hag really said about this. He came out and said, we can be very good in transition, but we also have to know when to hold the ball a little longer. Otherwise, it becomes a tennis game. And if you want to play tennis, we go to Wimbledon. We want to play football. You have to know how to read the match. Now, if you are to refer to the two flames, of, to the two flames I'm going to show you, the person that was really holding on that ball was not really good that's why i tell you ganacho really went ahead to play a better service for the side of man united in all those attacking modes because however much we are being attacked <coughs> dalo really went ahead to obviously maintain his position and the player of liverpool didn't know when to hold or to get hold of that ball more and more and more and more but what <coughs> makes the attack of united a goal and the attack of liverpool a, not a goal is that decision on when to get hold onto the boy a little bit longer ten hag is hitting about that that if you're going to be one of the best transitional team in the world you need to know when to release this ball early enough and when to get hold onto this ball a little bit longer to obviously create up a situation that can really help your side from not really getting haunt in there for you so that is Eric Ten Hag for you, talking about us being the transitional team in the world, meaning that it shouldn't be a to and fro, a back and forth. No way. You know, when you're transiting, you need to be having players who are really good at decision making, knowing when to pass, when not to pass, when to obviously decide to take on players, and when to really attract the attention of other defenders. The run of the balls should be really very important because this situation, like for the goal that Ahmad Yellow scores against Liverpool, he makes a run of the ball that enables Garnacho.
to obviously release him early you know and it resulted into a goal so that's what really makes such things very very different in a different aspect of the game altogether so for me i'm really excited about ten Hag and the style of play meaning that he wants to adapt the style of play of liverpool and arsenal when you look at arsenal they have very many styles when they decide to possess the ball they can possess it when they decide to come out and really hit you on the break they can hit you on the break and the way they transit is really very deadly because they transit with a lot of pace i think that's the only difference with uh, a man city man city can do the holder play but they move the bodies they move the bodies with the ball but for arsenal when they get that ball quick passing comes or quick passing takes center stage to really sit it to hit the opponent and beat him hands down that's live up that's arsenal for you the same applies to liverpool when they get that ball they really make sure they really attack you with a lot of pace and they make it hard for you to obviously have what we call a chance to obviously take on and really maybe do the defensive part of the game better so much like button guys and um we are i'm soon coming into your comment section so guys feel free to go into the comment section and really tell me what your thoughts are about this game of man united brentford and kobe mehinu being out and everything i've gone here to talk about ahead of this fixture or tie then ten Hag was asked this question about kobe mehinu that did he plan for kobe mehinu to be in the team for the start of the season before his injury against real madrid he said yes the plan was there we thought he would be a we thought he would be able to adapt quickly to the high level this movement this moment had to wait but it arrived obviously what cut short this moment of joy obviously coming through was the injury got when you're playing against real madrid after his collusion with after his collusion with <coughs> judy bellingham i think we are playing down was it in miami now when you look at eric ten Hag and uh, kobe Mainu, he went ahead obviously offer him games when you're playing against Leeds, <coughs> uh, was it Lyon, right? And all those games we have played before we obviously went for the US tour. That is it. In the US tour, we went ahead to play Arsenal first, I think. We played against Arsenal and we beat them by two goals to nil. Remember, Declan Rice played <coughs> that game and Kobe Mainu bossed that midfield. He bossed that midfield and played really very, very well. And we are like, He's in this season. Kobe Manu is going to be a revelation to the side of Man United. But God has his plans. No one knows the, the plans of the Lord. He went ahead not to happen or go our way. And the lad went ahead to get injured in the next game of Real Madrid. He was really playing very well and he got injured. That kept him out for July, August, September, October. November he came in through. And ever since then, he has gone ahead to be doing the new meaning that ten Hag had him in plans and this is where my big question is if he had him in plans how was he planning to use all these players <clears throat> ericsson mount casimiro hamra button scott mctominy because for bruno fernandez he's really untouchable we've gone ahead to know that he's like the bishop he's like a bishop of this team if at all this was a chessboard he's untouchable you know he plays every game and the manager really likes him a lot to play into those games that is the most worrying bit about it so how is the manager going to share the playing time amongst the midfielders because right now they're all available mount is back casimiro is back kobe menu is there amrabat is there and scott mctominy how is he gonna really plan with those players you know because if mason mount was to come out and he decided that he plays in the position of bruno fernandez sometimes then you would have gone ahead to be understood but right now i don't know the reason as to why ten hag is playing ten hag is i don't know where ten hag is going to be playing mason mount if you know you can really come on come out and really tell me and lastly before i come into your comments ten hag to comment to you so to approve to you that he really had this in plan he was asked on what he told kobe menu during the final of the carabao cup when he went ahead to obviously win you remember that photo very well this was ten hag talking to kobe menu after our triumph at wembley in a 2-0 win for
for United has went ahead to beat Newcastle to lift that trophy. Ten Hag has come out and said that. I remember that. I told him his day would come. It's a process and we are knowing and we are going to win trophies together and he will take part in the field. So this is a confirmation that Ten Hag really had this guy in plan that all what they're doing was really on plan and Ten Hag knew to it that at a certain point X he would really get Kobe Mainu into the team of Man United to do the job and really get everything flow as it's supposed to be flowing. So Ten Hag is doing the right job and he was like he saw this guy happen going to come and he talked to him and told him you're gonna really make it to the club of Man United but he was also with Zidane Iqbal but surprisingly Zidane Iqbal was sold to Utrecht you know and uh, if Zidane Iqbal was really a muscular guy and having the physicality of Kobe Mainu, I understand they would have gone ahead to be having two young stars playing to that midfield of Man United because of their press resistance and their game reading and their football intelligence being high. You know, Kobe Mainu and Zidane Iqbo would have gone ahead to be a revelation of the midfield for the club of Man United, but it didn't work out well because even Zidane Iqbo wanted to play more games because Ten Hag couldn't keep him out for a very long time. And you very much know that players in that age, all they want is playing the game of football. And Ten Hag was like, I'm not going to be the reason that is going to hinder this young boy from obviously kicking the ball to do the needful. Let me go into the comment section and see what you guys are really saying. I'm having a Gaba William. Thank you for watching him through bees. He's crying because of Kobe Mainu. But I think we should just wait for him and see whether he's really going to be available. If does is not available, I think we'll be good to go when you're playing against the side of Liverpool and Chelsea. Then, Omodion Sami. Good morning, Aradi. Good morning, Sami. Fred Kabaya. Oh my God. Let him be back. Okay, but it's not an easy game. No, in the Premier League, there is no an easy game. But we are favourites to win this game of football. <laughs> that is it. We are favourites to win against Brentford and Ten Hag. Looks like he's coming in through for revenge because this is the team that went ahead to really stop him in his second T, in his second competitive game for the club of Man United. 4 nil at half time and went ahead to concede by four goals to nil. And then he went ahead to turn it around. We are playing against Liverpool. Ten Hag came in through and won the game of Liverpool by two goals to one. Then Ensat Hore, if the players continue to run for the team, like how they pressed Liverpool they will win and Rashford has to stop feeling him feel big himself if you want to if if want the team to go forward so <clears throat> I think in the game of Liverpool I saw Rashford really working hard and running for the team that is it he played 120 minutes credit should be given to him would have gonna hit to kill off that game all he enough you know we didn't have gonna hit to go into the 120 minutes but obviously the moment was all written by Allah or God that it was Ahmad Diallo to come in through to obviously cut us from the rope of going to the penalties. And I think the players need to run. And that's what you miss from Casemiro and uh, Kobe Menu because of their work rate that is really huge. So we wait and see how <coughs> the manager is going to pick his starting 11. But I tell you, at 22 hours i'll be live bringing you the confirmed team news of man united versus brentford because that game of football is going to be played 23 hours right that's when things are really going to be happening at the community stadium of brentford in london then jonah ikede good morning brother thank you for watching him through you are surprised kakande francis good morning bro thanks for the nice presentation i always try my level best to bring you the best that you guys will really keep you keep you satisfied then um, idrissa kamara <coughs> good one for united update thank you for obviously coming in through then i'm having fred kabaya but all in all my prediction is 2-1 in favor of man united for me i went for 3-1 in favor of man united right so 2-1 in favor for the in the 2-1 in favor of man united is what we've gonna hit to go for and that is Fred Kabaya all right thank you for your prediction Ensa Tauri 
Tuare Ten Hag has to show to assure the world Man United is a big team and stop defending football. He has just gone ahead to let you know that he doesn't have his best players. And today, if you see Lisandro Martinez on the pitch, Casemiro on the pitch, Kobe Mino on the pitch, you'll tell me later in the match reaction how we are going to be playing. We have a style of play, but it depends on certain players. And to make it worse, Manchester United has always gone ahead to face it rough in such occasions because we've gone ahead to lose out on players that are supposed to be really doing the job for the club of Man United in the best way possible. So, if the manager doesn't have his best players, he cannot really play his best football. That is it. Uh, Tony Mealy. Good morning, brother. Thanks for the commentary. Me, I see United beating Brentford three goals to one today. Midnight. Thanks. Milton Toto Sironko. Thank you for watching through from Western U from Eastern Uganda. And it's always nice having to you. Let me end this poll and obviously see to it that we come to the start of the end of this video. And I've gone ahead to really get in 21 votes. And um, 38 have gone for Casimiro and Scott McTominay. Uh, 33 have gone in for Casimiro and Amrabat. 28 have gone in for Casimiro and Ericsson. So people want to see Casimiro and McTominay do their job for the club of Man United in the mix as we take on Brentford. So we wait and see how that is going to pan out. But thanks for everyone who's been part of this video. It has been nice. And good morning. Happy Easter holidays to everyone that is really enjoying it. The Muslims. Ramadan Mubarak. Rokan David is my name. I sign out for now. See you later. And I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. May the living to God bless you abundantly. I'm out. See you when you see me. But I'm going to come up with more recordings before the game takes center stage. We out.